Okay, folks, welcome back. This teaching is going to be specifically dealing with secrets of swing trading. All right, swing trading. Okay, the points of focus in this module. Okay, I'm going to teach you how to map buy conditions and implementing the optimal trade entry. And we're teaching you how to map sell conditions and implement the optimal trade entry. Okay, folks, we're looking at the Aussie dollar. This is a daily chart. And I'm going to be using this currency pair. This works on all currency pairs, all markets, all the asset classes as well. So before we get into it, I think one of the most repeating questions I get by way of folks that are following me on Twitter, Facebook, and on YouTube is they need to know or they feel they need to know the daily bias. You know, what should I do today? If I just knew ICT, if I just knew what the bias is going to be tomorrow, I knew I would just be profitable in my demo account. I knew I'd see the positive return in my time. And while there's several things that we can do to arrive at daily bias, um, in my mentorship, I teach institutional order flow in great detail, but that's not what I'm teaching you here. But I will give you a real quick approach that it's not going to be as time sensitive. And by that, I mean you won't catch the turning points with it. OK, uh, you're going to get the meat of the moves. And that's all that you're really required to find really to do very well. Uh, there's other tools and concepts that we can use to warn ourselves of potential turning points of the likelihood of a reversal. But before we get into it, I, I just wanted to make mention of that because I know there's a lot of folks that see my videos and they come away with the understanding that you have to have the bias every single day. And you don't. You don't need to know that. Uh, you just need to know the few times a month or a couple times a week when it's really loaded in one direction over the other and in trade in those conditions. And I think if you do that, your demo account results will be much more encouraging. And your time spent practicing will be a lot more fruitful. So when we look at price action, there's a couple things that I want to kind of remind you of. There are times when the market moves in trending environments where it moves directionally. Then the market goes into consolidation and then it trends again. Well, those two conditions are very easy to see if you just relax and try not to overcomplicate it. Now, there are specific rules in finding key support and resistance levels and we mentioned a few of those in the higher time frame concepts video that you should have watched prior to this one but i believe that it's easier for me to teach you how to find the bias by teaching you how to stay on the side of higher time frame momentum okay and while i am not a supporter, if you will, of indicators. It's going to seem sacrilegious for me <laughs> to put an indicator on my chart like you're going to see tonight, but I think it's a good crutch. It helps uh, traders find their way, if you will, on a directionally, I guess, trending environment. So the way I use this is I incorporate two moving averages. Okay, now I don't require using a moving average but I think the smoothing effect of the moving average over price action on a higher time frame daily chart will help at least build an understanding of where you should really quickly, just looking at a chart real quick with the moving averages, it'll help you stay on one side of the marketplace. Now, the benefit of it is only derived at by having it on a daily chart. As soon as you start applying this to like a five minute chart or one minute chart, the reliability really goes out the window, in my opinion. So why is there any significance of a moving average or two moving averages placed on a daily chart? Well, because the daily chart really is the most widely followed chart in the banking sector. So when we're looking for an intermediate term level of momentum, it's going to be found on the daily chart. So if we want to be trading in intermediate term momentum and it's exactly where the banks are be looking at in that time frame, 
then it goes without saying that there should be a high probability of, well, confluence with that idea and what we see in price action. So I've taught in the past the 9 and 18 and an 18 and 40, but I'm going to give you one that's really simple, and it's the 10 and 20 period. Okay, and the red line here is going to delineate the 20 period. Okay, and the green level here is going to delineate the 10 level. Okay, so it's 10 period and a 20 period moving average. Okay, and I'll let you see what these settings are. So that way you guys can relax and know what they are. It's exponential moving average, 20 period on the close. And the other one is a 10 period exponential on the close. Okay. So that way you have everything that's on my chart now. Now on a daily chart, all we're looking for is preferably the market leaving a consolidation. And I think everyone would agree that this is a consolidation here. And price has left the consolidation by breaking a swing high here. And also we have the crossover on the moving average. So right there, this is what I want you to do. This is how you map out your bullish and well, in this case, it's a bullish condition. And you drag that rectangle all the way up until a point of which where it crosses below the 20. So in other words, 10 drops down below. We can't uh, look for any buys in here after this point until we see the daily trade back above with the 10 period above the 20 period. Okay. It's a real simple little momentum filter. Okay. It's not to hang everything on it. Okay, but for sake of finding swing trades, I'm going to incorporate a couple things here, and you'll see how fast and easy you can get to a bias trading on one side of the marketplace only and incorporating some of the things I've already taught you. So we have the bias shifting to a bullish condition here with the 10 period going over the 20 period on the daily chart. Again, it's important that you only do this on the daily chart. Try not to do this on your 5 and 15 and 1 minute charts. But when you have this condition, we can drop down into an hourly chart. Now, why an hourly chart? Hourly chart to me is a real good swing trading time frame. Okay, so you'll be able to see everything that's important from a weekly basis or a daily basis. But to me, 60 minute when we're swing trading, ideal scenario. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna go over here in the lower left hand corner. There's a little tiny, I guess it's a little uh, half triangle. You drag that over to the beginning of your shaded area that you've delineated where the 10 crosses over the 20. And we are leaving, okay, a consolidation. We have a break in market structure here. So we have potential bullishness. And this is important. The 10 period is pointing higher and the 20 period is pointing higher. And the 10 is opening up and spreading away from the 20. Okay, this is called stacking. Okay, so whenever these... Two averages are opening up and pointing up, it's stacking. When it's bearish, like it is over here, when the 10 period is below the 20 period and it's opening up and both are pointing down, that again is called stacking. That's when the conditions are optimal. Okay. So we have really strong momentum here. So now if we drop down into a 60 minute chart, it'll take us immediately down into the beginning of this shaded point here. Now here's where it's important that you follow along with the optimal trade entry. Once we're in this shaded area, price has to be above the red line and have moved away, made a swing high after an impulse leg, moving higher. So there, in other words, we have to see price moving higher above the red line and we're gonna be looking for optimal trade entries when it rechases back into a previous swing low. Here, price is below the red line, we cannot take anything there. So we missed this move here, which is fine. If we look at this scenario back here, I kind of like want to bring this to attention here. If we look at this move up, if we drop our fib on that, I'm going to show you what you would have had to sit through if you did something like this. Okay, here's your swing, impulse leg and optimal trade entries down here, you would have to sit through all of this before finally the move takes place, okay? I don't want you doing that. 
even though this is a, a scenario that worked out pretty good and would have gotten a symmetrical price swing, that's not the setups I want you to see, or at least hunt. What I want you to look for is when price is above the red 20 period, and it makes an impulse lag, and it comes back down to an optimal trade entry long. Okay, we don't have it here. I'm going to spare you putting the fib on because this didn't get down to it. And price is going below the red line. We're below the red line here. Okay, and all through here, we're filtering. We can't take anything here. And finally, watch what happens. We start seeing impulse swings and price moves away from the red line, comes back to it. But now watch what happens. See, we have the price dip below the 20, but the 10 has not crossed over. So this can happen on the one hour chart. Do not do this when it does it on the daily chart. Price has to be above both the 20 and 10. But on the one hour, price can stab below the red line during the retracement. Only valid when the 10 period has not crossed over the red though. So as soon as this occurs and then the 10 period trades below or marks below the 20 period moving average, if we got that crossover, we can't take the long. Okay. So we'll have the Fibonacci here. You're probably thinking, so well, this has been several days now, Michael. Did you know this isn't giving me a trade every single day? Right. This is just that one pair. So we have an impulse leg here, comes back down into optimal trade entry, perfect delivery, and we have symmetrical price swing here. Okay, really nice little swing trade here. And it started on the 26th, ended on the 27th. So basically one day of a hold for a nice little swing trade. Putting the trade on here at around uh, 75.70 and getting out at approximately 76.10. So not a bad little move. You can leave a small portion on as it is a swing trade and leave your stop down here. Okay. Do not trail your stop loss. You want it to be taking partials. Okay. And then once we get a run away from a consolidation like we have here, price has to show a willingness to want to run. Remember, inside this green shaded area, we are bullish on the daily. So we're anticipating this type of move here. We want to see it you know, starting to run higher. So when consolidations occur, if we take that trade, we want to leave our stop loss in until we start leaving the consolidation. Okay. And then we can start trailing it up behind two swing lows from market action. And I'll explain that in a second. But taking a portion off here and then letting the remainder go, you can see how we have really nice extensions up here at the 500%. And then. Price drops down in here. So we can't take a new setup here, but we can hold on to the one we did down here. Price starts to run. And now we have another one right in here. We have a potential swing up and down. And I'll show you that one. Right here. Okay, there. It's just the highest body close or open. Trades back down into it. Now it overshoots it a little bit, okay, because we are on a one hour chart and I'm not using the wick. But your stop loss would be below here. But it came close, but ultimately it spreads out, gives us a symmetrical price swing. Price drops down below the red line. We can't take anything in here. No long trades in here. We have to stay, remember, inside this green shaded area, we're looking for longs. So while price is below the red line, we can't take anything long. We have to wait until price gets back above the red line, as it does here. But then price goes below the red line, and so does the 10 period. So we can't take this scenario. We have to wait. Price trades higher. Dips back down. Not deep enough for optimal trade entry in here. So nothing would have happened there. Price here gives us a nice little scenario. And again, this is an hourly chart. So... There's a little bit more pips in this if you look at a 15 minute time frame or a five minute time frame. So here we have our impulse leg, retraces, optimal trade entry, symmetrical price swing. Leave a little portion on, why? Because we are inside the green shaded area and we're anticipating that daily chart to expand on the upside. So this is an area where we could have taken another long or we could have added more from our original position OK, 
Okay. And we can't use this one, even though we have equal highs, which you know about. Uh, this would be a run on that. Uh, we, if we could do a, a fib from this level here up to this body, you'll see it is actually a perfect optimal trade entry, but the filtering process, we can't take it. So nothing there, nothing there. Price trades below the red line, can't trade there, can't trade there. And price meanders sideways in here. We get above it, but doesn't give us anything to trade there. And we're still below the red line, can't take any trades there long. We're below the red line, we're still filtering. Now, this is something you can go through all the majors with. Okay, or if you like to trade exotics, which I don't like to do that in the States, um, I don't get the tax treatment for anything that's not coupled with the dollar. So you guys can look for every every pair out there, 28 pairs, you can go through this and find a scenario where a swing trade will be forming with this insight. And again, we're inside the green shaded area, so there's nothing we can do in terms of a buy while the price is below the red line. And we miss all that. Okay. Now we go back out to a daily time frame. So we had a couple in there for swing trades, not an everyday trade, okay? And this whole movement here was about uh, about a month and two weeks or so. So we had a couple swing trades. Now swing trades are, are about that length. They're not everyday trades. You wanna put them on and hold on for them for a while. Now we're gonna look at when we look for mapping out a bearish condition. Okay, and we're going to look for the crossover here. And we're going to drag that down until we get a crossover on the upside. And we're going to change this to red. So that way everything inside this red shaded area, we will keep our focus on only looking for optimal trade entry cells when prices, whoa, that's a little too much now, isn't it? <laughs> Let's do this. Let's go to, yeah, that's a little bit friendlier on the eye. All right. And Again, we're in consolidation, so we want to see price break down on the moving average, yes, and show a willingness to want to leave the consolidation. That happens here, comes back up, retests the, the consolidation, and now we can start to look for optimal trade entries right in here. So we're going to take this little toggle thing here, put it, eh, I'll start it here so you guys can see the contrast, but really, when we get about uh, the 11th of October, that's when it would be an ideal scenario, because Every time we leave a consolidation, we're going to wait for it to potentially uh, retrace back to it, much like we saw it here. It left the consolidation, came back down, potentially retesting the point at which it left, and then we can start seeing it really start to uh, tear up higher. So we're going to drop down into an hourly chart now, and we can start looking for price staying below the red line and giving optimal trade entry sells. Okay. Now, notice we can spike through it, and that's like we just said before when the buys, but if we go through it, the 10 period has to remain below it too. It cannot cross over it. So we have an optimal trade entry sell here. And again, this is not an everyday setup. There's swings. So we have optimal trade entry here. Body to body, sell. 10's below the 20. They're both stacking. This is a sell at optimal trade entry. And target two is hit beautifully you can leave a little portion on with the stop up here but uh swing trading you do not want to aggressively trail your stop you want to be taking partials and looking to add new positions when you can here's another scenario okay uh nope can't do it we're above the red line and we're Above the red line in here can't do that now we're above it for a long period of time so we can't do anything till we get back below it does it here price stays below it we climb back above it again we're in a sell scenario so we have to wait for price to get below both the red line and see the 10 and 20 period exponentials stacking lower and we have something in here. Let's take a look at that. We have a swing high here. You see that? We have an indecisive candle here. We have a bullish up close candle and a lower close candle here. The highest portion is the body on this one. We're going to drag it down 
to this lowest body here, trades out the optimal trade entry, and we get target one, falls short of target two, but does give us an optimal uh, trade entry to sell there. And the next ideal one is here. We have price below both moving averages. They're stacking here. It does punch up through it, but we don't get the 10 period to cross over. And we have to uh, put that down right on the lowest body portion here. Comes up, nicks the 62% uh, retracement level. There's a sell. We could look for target one, target two, symmetrical. 200 extension eventually. Uh, here's another one in here where price trades back up to here, but we cross over, so we're probably not going to take that one. We have to hold on to the original one we had up here. And another one. No, we don't get up high enough to get into that one. Yeah, it didn't retrace deep enough there. So we would still be holding some portion on that we entered back there. And we don't have anything here. And price goes back above the red line, starts consolidating. And then we have price really not doing too much. So I'll take that Fibonacci out so it's clear to see what's going on. And price starts to move back in our favor here. Again, we're waiting for these scenarios. This is what you look for. You wait for these types of setups. And let's put that right there. Right here. So we have both the averages moving lower. Even though we spike through the red line, the 10 period has not crossed over the 20. Looking for it inside this red shaded area. Again, we're anticipating that daily chart to expand going lower. So we put our short on here. Stop will be above the high here. And we can see target one, target two, symmetrical price swing, beautifully hit. Eventually, later on, we get uh, 200 extension hit. We have another scenario. Now, even though we've spiked through, the 10 period has not crossed over the 20 period. So everything is still valid here. Optimal trade entry sell. Target one hit, target two hit. Eventually, symmetrical price swing is hit as well. And we can hold on to a portion. Now we have a consolidation. When price leaves the consolidation, then and only then do we consider looking to lower our protective stop loss. And I'll just bring that over here a little bit. And we don't go anything more towards uh, an optimal trade entry until we uh, start seeing price back above the red line. And now we're consolidating again. And I think we're probably going to run out of sell condition before long yeah we have another one in here here's a nice one we have a nice swing high here price trades down right to here optimal trade entry sell and we can see symmetrical price swing boom really nice little swing uh, trade there price trades above the red line so we're on the sidelines until we get back in sync again Right in here, another scenario. So what this does is actually gives us a context to work within. And I'm going to use this body here. And we're going to drag it down to the lowest open or close, which is right there. Optimal trade entry right there. Sell. Beautiful expansion down to set magical price point and 200 extension. And it doesn't give us much more below that before we started going consolidating and back above the red line. So we're neutral and then everything has reversed until recent current price action now. So you can see it gives you a context to work within. Now it's not perfect, nothing's ever gonna be perfect, but it gives you a quick down and dirty way to apply two simple moving averages, a 20 and 10 period exponential moving average on the daily and on the hourly chart. And it frames your context of what side of the marketplace should you be waiting to only trade on. Now. Go back through here, and you'll see, obviously, there's a few times where if we are in this environment where we're in the red shaded area, the ideal scenario would be to be looking for selling short. But right away, you, know, you can look for like this here, this scenario. This is a buy 
here and it runs up. What would this be if it's not a swing trade? What could this potentially be? I'll just throw this in here as a bonus. This could be a day trade. Okay, you could be a day trader here because it's counter. What you're waiting for for a swing trade going short, if you see these scenarios, well, you can take it along. Why? Because you have equal highs here. Okay, what's what's the high on this candle? 78.30. So what's 20 pips above that? 78.50. Okay, so we could look for an area to go up to 78.50. there okay so we could be a buyer here and take our profits here okay or we can look over here and take a portion of it off here and leave a small portion on to see if we can get a run about 10 20 pits above that as a day traders mindset okay that type of thing so we can do things both directions even though we have a cell model okay or a cell program that we're working inside of with this red shaded area relative to the daily chart okay doesn't negate you not being able to do anything. It just means that for a swing trade, you have to wait for price to give you the scenarios as we outlined for bearishness like here. Okay, optimal trade entry, sell, and then leaving portions on a lot longer than you would with day trades. So in other words, for a swing trade, you can take off like 50% and leave the remaining 50% on. Whereas a day trade, if it goes to your first objective, you want to take about 75 to 80% off and leave a small portion on because it's a day trade. So I, th I think this is going to pretty much do this video here and watch it a couple times. You'll see it's not complicated. It's not, you know, acrobatics. It's a very simple approach to using a retail tool, a moving average. But let me just tell you, moving averages are actually used on large funds and they're trend following in nature. So the reason why I'm telling you how to use it like this, because this is very close to one of the long term trending models that a large fund uses that I know of. Okay, folks, hopefully you enjoyed this presentation. If you'd like to find more, you can visit my website at theinnercircletrader.com.